What's up everybody, it's your boy Delphi. We back and we live for episode 21. Today I had the opportunity to interview the litigator. The litigator is someone who actually defended himself in court. You know, he won after having three trials that didn't work in his favor. He won on the fourth trial. You know, um, after serving 13 years in prison for a murder that he didn't um, <clears throat> commit, you know, he's here today to share his story. You know, he was all over social media, all over television, all over, you know, papers. Well, he's here today to share his story. And also, he's going to also enlighten us on a program, a program that he's working on, you know, to enlighten the youth and also young adults on the amendments that we need to know and the rights that we need to know in order for us to protect ourselves. Stay tuned. Episode 21, The Dad Paul Show. Yo, so today on um, today's Dev Hall show, we have a special guest. You know, um, a lot of people been reading the news all over social media, um, on TV. You know, this guy named Hassan Bennett. You know, the man defended himself in court for his trial. You know, he beat it. He spanked that. He just got done telling me that. You know, it took four trials to get this verdict. You feel me? First trial. You feel me? Mistrial. Yep. Second trial. You feel me? Um, was found guilty, beating on the pill, got in the pill on that. Third trial, one shy away from being acquitted. Fourth trial, he beat it. And he's sitting right here with me on the day's Dev Hall show. What's up, Hassan? What's up? You know your stuff, man. Yeah, you man. Know your stuff. You I follow gotta, it up. I got to do some research. You know, I don't want to have you on the show that. and just act like I don't know what's going on. But all jokes aside, um, it's glad, I'm glad to have you here today, man. It's a blessing glad to have my um, brother here and especially beating the court system. You know, you just knocked it out, man. Um, I want the world to know who you are. To introduce yourself to everyone, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Hassan Bennett. You can call me Haas. Some people call me the litigator. You can follow me at, at DA underscore litigator, L-I-T-I-G-A-T-O-R, or email me at Hassan Bennett one at Gmail. And that's at all platforms, Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram, and Facebook. Now, yeah. now, if you don't mind, is, is can you speak on certain things of your um, the case that you beat? Yeah. All right. Now, just if you can take a trip down um, when memory you got lane. arrested, your memory mm -hmm. lane down, uh, two thousand six um, days after you were arrested and you was claiming that you was understand what you were. Mm -hmm. Now, like, what was going through your mind when you got arrested for this? I didn't do it. I don't know. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know why I was there. I just was like. They can't find me guilty of something I didn't do. So it's just be a process. Right. So, so I was just waiting for the next court date to get home. Now when you say the next court date, how long did you have to wait? Well, my first, my first preliminary hearing was in November, late November. Okay. And I thought I was going to get out there like, oh, they'll straighten it out by preliminary. It's a month and a half. Yeah, that was continued. Okay. So I finally get in preliminary on February 14, 2007. Right. About s almost six months after mm -hmm. my arrest. So I'm like, I'm going home now. Okay. The witness got on the stand and he said, no, he didn't do that. The police made me do that. Made me say that. They read in his statement and they held me over. I didn't understand it. Okay. They don't let me out for trial. Trial came and looked gloomy. I got a mistrial. Now, what one people don't know that's in the notes of testimony is the mistrial, when it was declared a mistrial, it was 11-1. That first trial was 11-1. But it wasn't in favor of not guilty. That 11-1 was in favor of guilty mm. when they declared the mistrial. They declared a mistrial. And as you know, the second trial, I was found guilty and sentenced to life in a state correctional institution. No mm. possibility of parole. So while you finding out all this information, what the <coughs> hell is going on through your mind after you already know you're not, you, you know, you're not guilty? Like, oh shit, I'm about to face a life sentence for something I didn't do. I didn't do. think I was going to be found guilty. I ran, in the, I ran the county doing everything that I ran wild. I didn't, really, I didn't pay attention to the law until after my first trial. Before my first trial, I was in the county fighting. I was in the county getting cell phones, talking to people. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the regular county bid. I'm just bid. Right, you know right, what I say? Right. Make the time go fast. That's right. all I'm doing is bid. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? But once I saw the first trial, I was like, whoa, this getting dark. Mm. This don't look like it's working in my favor. This don't look like I'm going to be found not guilty because I didn't do it. Mm. This look like I'm going to be found guilty. Let me go in the law library and try to figure things out. Mm -hmm. And I went in there and I studied hard. I lost it after that. Now the third trial. <clears throat> third trial. You're facing, uh, you're in court, I assume, mm -hmm. and one vote away from being sent home, mm -hmm. going home. What was going through that? Going through your mind as well? I said the DA is a mop. She's a bum. Tracy Gatos is a mop. That was running through my mind during the trial. So I got her beat. When the first day of jury deliberations, when they considering it, I'm like, why well, didn't come back yet? Right. I'm out the floor with this lady. Why well, didn't come back? Mm -hmm. Second day came, third day, and finally we end up getting a, a hung jury. Now we didn't find out right then what the what the pool was like. Right. They just said, my heart judge, my heart just ruled it to be a hung jury. So I was kind of like. Now, for those that don't know, can you explain what a hung jury is? Okay. In a trial, in a trial, all four people, I mean, all 12 people had to come up with the same decision. So all 12 people have to either find you guilty or all 12 people have to find you innocent. If any one of those 12 people say, oh, we don't. It, it, we find them not guilty. And the other ones want to find you guilty, that's a hung jury. If it's 12-12, I mean, if it's 6-6, six, six, mm -hmm. that's a hung jury. If it's 9-3, to three, that's a hung jury. If all of them don't come up with a decision together, it's a hung jury. It's a hung jury. Yeah. So when they said hung jury, I was like, man. I felt kind of like robbed. I'm like, man, do this and that. Right. And then the article came out. I'm like, oh, they think I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. and then the second article came out and it said 11 1. I said, Yep. And this one was for, and this one was for not guilty 11 1. 11 1 in right. favor of not guilty. Versus the first one, which was 11 1 favoring you'd be guilty. Yes. Now, now after you be, I mean, I said be after you got sent back to jail, I assume, mm -hmm. um, after the third trial, what made you say, you know what? I'm taking this shit into my own hands. No. I'm, I've, I represent myself in the third trial, too. Oh, see, see. By the time I got to the third trial. I'm glad you just cleared that up, man. That's the difference between different media platforms, yo. Some people had the right accurate information, and some people won't. So I'm glad we had the um, guy right here to speak. Okay. And I went to trial August, uh, August 27, 2018. That's when I started the third trial. And I represented myself in that third trial wearing prison uniform as well. Yeah, I read on that. They said, "Why uh, did you, you? Why are you defending? Um, why are you defending yourself in the prison?" Why lie? Mm -hmm. If I come to your house as a post off, as a in your post office outfit, and I got a book bag, right? I don't, and I drop a piece of mail in your box. You're gonna say what? You're gonna think I'm what? Mailman, right? You're gonna think I'm the mailman. I got you. If I'm, and when you find out I'm not the mailman, you gonna like, who is it? Right. You know, some weird stuff. Right, he, right. He, he dressed up. I really, he tricked me. Right. Tricked me. right. If I'm in prison and I come in with a suit, suit and booted, right, to a jury that's supposed to decide the truth, and I'm trying to get them to believe in me, mm -hmm. but the whole time I'm like, you in jail. Because you ain't got no tailor coming in there suiting you for a suit. No. The suit looks droopy. Mm -hmm. You got the state, uh, you got your. Whatever county sneakers you got on, mm -hmm. you just know you're in jail. I'm not deceiving anyone. I'm keeping it, I'm giving you all facts. And if I want you to believe what I'm saying, then I gotta, I gotta accept where I'm at. Right. Look, look, jury, I'm in jail. Yup. Now mm -hmm. for no other crime, for this crime right here. Now, you defending yourself in the third trial. Mm -hmm. After that happened, what made you say, I'm gonna go back and defend myself again? Cause, Cause you was this was you that cause you was that close? Mm. Right. No, I had one on a pill without a lawyer. I had run one on a without a pill, the post collateral relief act. I represent myself on that without a lawyer and I won. And I had to go head up with a judge on that one. Mm. 
I mean, the judge had to render the decision whether she was going to grant me a new trial or believe or side with the district attorney. I did that and I overturned it. No lawyer was sitting beside me then. Mm. Second trial, uh, well, the third trial, trial in, in last August that ended in September. I represented myself and got 11 to 1. Why wouldn't I represent myself? Again. Yeah. Right. When I let a lawyer take it, I lost. Twice. The first time, it was 11 1 in favor of guilty. Right. So I was losing with the lawyer. Right. I got to let the lawyer get it. I lost. Mm. I let the lawyer handle me on a pill, handle my case on a pill. The judge wrote me, listen, we're going to dismiss your PCR rep. So why would I go give up something that's working for something that's not working? Oh, you're right. It makes sense. Everything came full surface. It wasn't causing you anything, was it? Me? Cause, yeah, because you're feeling yourself, right. Now, did you have, like... Except, except for the jail calls. Okay. Phone calls and commentary, you know. Right. Now, when you were defending yourself in court, did you feel like you were looked at as a criminal instead of a person that's knowledgeable I argue, my argument was that I've, I'm not innocent, but I'm innocent of this crime. You see what yeah, I'm I saying? I got you, I got you. My argument is they, the police don't like me because I'm a street guy. Mm -hmm. I'm out there all the time. My friend died. Mm -hmm. People don't like me because of my reputation in the streets. Mm -hmm. The cops said, yeah, he's a, we're in tactical patrol. We mm -hmm. want to know the people of concerns. Basically saying I'm a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm an angel. Right. I just let them know I didn't do this crime. Mm -hmm. I'm far from an angel. Right. I was far from an angel when I got locked up. Mm -hmm. But I didn't but you do know this what you crime didn't do. right here. Right. Now, after serving 13 years, you know, you out, you know, I see you on Instagram, you know, the litigator, he already gave his um, Instagram name, you know, his name for different platforms. Uh, I see a lot of people asking you for advice, mm. you know, so what can you give um, these people that need information on defending themselves as far as, let's say, for example, you got someone in um, court, like I had a cousin um, was in jail uh, for a similar situation. Um, Talk to me. You know, he was in, in jail. I seen, I seen a lot of things that I didn't expect to see at 14. You know, um, I was in a murder trial, or I participated in a murder trial. And uh, I was just sitting here just thinking like, damn, like, you know, you taking a lot of years from someone that's defending themselves or, well, this is a different situation, for, you know, defending themselves. And when those years is taken away from you and you come back, it's just like you're supposed to automatically adapt into the real world. You feel me? Like, how was that transition for you to do that after 13 years being spent in jail? Well, I came home on a mission. I came home on a mission that I was going to use my experience, my adversity to help other people. This was my goal. I need to help you. I need to help you. I need to help her. I need to help anybody I can because you can be Hassan Bennett. Mm -hmm. See, I, I don't think I, I, I lost because of corruption. I lost because of a bad lawyer. But I also lost because I wasn't skilled enough to call it out. You see what I'm right. saying? I wasn't skilled enough to call it out. We know this is a corona mm -hmm. and we know this is water. Right. Right? Now, if I don't know the difference of corona and water, I might drink the corona and be tipsy all night. Right. You see what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. can say, here, take the Corona. Here, right. this, you want some water? Here, take the water. Mm -hmm. And I walk around tipsy, but I know the difference of a Corona and a water right. because you have that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, the same thing goes in court. If something is happening, you can't identify, you're not drinking water, you're drinking the Corona. Right. I got you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Now, did you have old heads in jail that was saying, you like, yo, man, you need to educate yourself because I heard you say, um, I want to say after the second trial, right? The second trial? Was after it? the second trial? Yeah, after the second trial, you, you, you started like going hard and started really no, studying. After the first trial, I started going hard. Okay. After the second trial, I lost. It was a rocky, it was a, it was a rocky situation. Okay, so what books were you reading to keep you like I motivated, read, man? Understanding 
criminal law, right? Okay. I would. I read that from the beginning to end. Understanding criminal law, I would. I read the Post Collateral Relief Act. I read uh, We Want Freedom by Mumia Abu Jamal. I read mm -hmm. um. I read the Jailhouse Lawyers Manual, also written by Mumia Abu Jamal. Michelle Alexander, The New Jim Crow. I also read books like Uncle Tom's Cabin, mm. The Coop That Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Spook That Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I also read uh, 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 How to Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, yeah, To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird, yeah. Kill a mockingbird. yeah, 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 yeah I read yeah. that. Right. I read uh, uh, Malcolm X's autobiography, mm -hmm. Dr. Martin King's autobiography. I read COINTELPRO, who told me a lot about the Black Panther Party. So when you read all of these things and you understand that, oh, these people, these people fought for their rights. Right. These people fought for their rights. Malcolm fought for your, our rights. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know they exist. Mm -hmm. I'm, like a, I'm like a back smack in the face of them. Mm -hmm. If they fought for me and every, everybody was keeping a foot on their neck, they were getting sick by dogs. They was getting physically yeah. abused. Mm -hmm. I'm in prison. Oh, they tricking, they just tricking me. Yeah, play with pig. Give you a basketball. Right. Well, shoot balls. You got a life sentence. But you got a game. We right. want you on your team. Right. Hey, we got some tobacco for you. Go ahead. But you right. got a life sentence. Hey, you watch all the MTV, BT you want. Now, by you saying all that, right, um, reading, you know, you seem like you got a library right up in there right now, man. All those books you just said. For those that caught up, um, y'all should jot down those notes. But uh, <clears throat> I wanted to notice, I always wanted to ask this question, um, other than my cousin who was um, in jail before. Like, what motivates y'all to read? Like, you know, because it's a stereotype that, and, and this is Dev Hall Show. Why. This is Dev Hall Show. We about to ask questions. So like, it's a stereotype when people be like, yo, when people go to jail, they want to be all educated. They want to be this, they want to do that. Like, uh -huh. what is that stereotype? I only want to know that. Like, right. like, do you ever hear that? Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah. But you got, you got everybody in jail has their place. Mm -hmm. But this is the thing. When you go up to the mountains, see, it's different from State Road. It's different when you got somebody like us mm -hmm. cussing you out. Ah. But when you go up to the mountains mm -hmm. and you got a redneck, only admit, get out of here, and you just, you know he picking on you. Mm -hmm. You just know he picking on you. He might say these these dark. I, when yeah. I first went up the mountain, I heard somebody say, they asked the, the, the sergeant, I mean the LT, did you watch the game last night? Did you watch the Steelers game? Mm -hmm. He said, I threw away my TV when Obama was elected. Right. Everybody's head went up, ain't no doubt. When you hear stuff like that, and you see. The way they treat the Caucasians versus the way they treat the blacks. Yeah. Unless you can play game, unless you got a sport game. Yeah. And you see you get false write-ups just to get you out the way. I don't like him. I'm going to write him up for disobeying a direct order. I'm going to write him up for threatening a CEO. And I'm going to write him up for using abuse. That's to get you out the way write-up. You don't have to do nothing, but I want to get you out the way. So I'm going to write a fake story up. Put it in a write-up and give you them three charges. Mm. And you're going to sit in the hole. You're going to sit in the hole for about a good 40, 45 to 90 days. When you see them playing with that pen. Yeah. And you keep suffering because they playing with that pen. You can't even voice your damn opinion. You start saying, hold on. I need a way to fight back. I need Because as a lifer, if you run up in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Then you may get assault by a lifer, and that's another life sentence. So even if you overturn the first life sentence, I watched somebody overturn the first life sentence, right? After he got charged by assault by a lifer, he got found guilty, got another life sentence. Double he life. overturned the first life sentence, right? You would think they would overturn the second, because now he's not a lifer. He said they had the mentality of a lifer when he assaulted him. So now you got to say, hold on, I got to control myself and find another tool because these is going to hurt me more right. than, it, than the person I'm trying to hurt. Right. I so the you. only way, what other way can you do it? If you can't do it physically, mm -hmm. you got to start working on yourself. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the courts. You sitting up there, there's people, you in all types of gang wars. Mm -hmm. you, done, you done knuckled up out here. Right. 
You was in free falls with all your homies. And then you come to court and words take you on. Yeah. A bunch of words bury you. Right. So now you're like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? How the sneaky, tricky prosecutor did it? You know, the judge is on my side. You don't know who to blame. you just like, it ain't right. Mm. Well, they smart. You're going to let them out with you? Right. You got to find a way to fight back. And in this world, in this world, the way to fight back is through knowledge. Mm. You see the wars, the wars that's going on, they got all types of trick uh, uh, technology with the missiles knowledge so you basically advising people to read yeah no doubt pick up a book teach somebody if you don't pick up a book then open up something speak to somebody that's knowledgeable those that's knowledgeable find a way to speak to those that don't know right um now this attention that you're receiving you know after being released did you expect all this attention this fast not this fast i expected the attention but not this fast i thought i was gonna have to work mm -hmm. I thought I was going to have to work the Instagram, the work the Facebook, the work the Twitter. But it's, I can't just say I had help. Those people that follow me, I see them. Mm -hmm. They reach out to this person, reach out to this person, reach out to this person. In jail, they used to have and, and pick before they switched it. You could watch. Instagram. Mm -hmm. And after my first try, I would go watch, and they moved me over to pick, and I would go back and look at people's pages. Mm -hmm. And I see people commenting like, yo, send it to this person. Look into this case. This person, look into this case. Mm -hmm. I didn't need those people to look into my case then. Right. I thought, I, I was confident. I had it. But now they're still doing it. Yo, look at this story. Mm -hmm. My followers are the one pushing them. Yeah. They're like teen. That's like my teen. That's like and it's to a point it's where like it, family. Now, is it to a point where some of these followers you don't even know? I don't even know. I got a late. I got a. I got a call today from. I think her name Miss Wendy. Okay. She was out. She was from LA. Mm hmm. And she said, "I love your story. I love what you do. What can you do? What can I do for you? Mm. What can I do for you?" I said, "Just support." I'm trying to. Play. I told her about the program I was trying to build. She said, "When you get it." Send it to me. I said, you run it out there, we're running out around here. We're a team. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're becoming. A team. Now, I'm glad you spoke, you spoke on that program. What program are we talking about? Well, I'm developing a program as far as teaching legal, uh, teaching basic legal information, basic rights. Now, when I spoke to Miss Wendy, Miss Mindy, oh, let me see what her name I'm sorry. <laughs> when I spoke to her, she said, um, yeah, but the cops are killing cops. It's one thing to complain about the, what the cops are doing. Mm -hmm. I respect that. But also, you still have to hold yourself accountable. And she agreed with me. Mm -hmm. She agreed with me. Mindy, my fault. Her mm -hmm. name is Miss Mindy. So in this program, I want to teach you your rights. I want to teach you your rights from the First Amendment of the United States Constitution From the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, mm -hmm. all the way to the Last Amendment. Mm -hmm. I want to give you, all the way, not to the last, all the way to the fourth. That's the basics. Mm -hmm. So you understand what you can do. You see what I'm saying? No, no, no. Because if I spend my whole life like, don't do that, them people going to get to you. Right. Don't do that, them people going to get to you. Don't do that. Don't do, uh-uh. Don't walk like that. Then, and you just spend your whole life in fear of what you can't do. Right. If I turn around and say, no, you can do this. And they're not supposed to do this. And if they do that, you can go X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Now you live your life in a whole nother way in a, in a realm of what you can do. No. It's more, it's empowering. If I tell you, no, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Now you just, you feel inferior. But right. if I tell you, no, you can do this because of this. And this is why you can do this. Mm -hmm. It's empowering. Right. So my whole way is to teach from the First Amendment to the 14th Amendment, I want to give you the basics of how it is and where it came from mm -hmm. in an entertaining way. I got to speak to those people from that, that neighborhood I in was, a way that they'll 
be open to it. I was going to say that. I feel like a lot of people would relate to you. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you just said, man, you know, you're not an angel today. You wasn't an angel back um, after your arrest, you know, at the end of the day. But you are the person you are. Now, you know? now that right there, I think that's very important. A lot of people don't feel like reading the amendments. You know, that's being honest. Now, if you got someone that has a story like you and you out here really <laughs> to the point where it's motivating a lot of different people, it's going to be it's going to be to the point where you're going to be on Ellen. You're going to be everywhere, you mm -hmm. know, because like, I'm serious. man. I'm not trying to be funny. Like this is almost unheard of. You know, I, I was talking to you behind the scenes um, about this Ted Bundy character, mm -hmm. this guy, you know, it's a different character. I'm not even going to. Yeah, if y'all know who he is, y'all know who he is. But this guy defended himself after a while. You know, he basically humiliated his lawyer in court, made the guy walk out, and he defended himself. Did he win? No. He was sentenced to death, the death penalty. But the point I'm making is we have a successful African American that defended himself. Like that's big to me, man. Like I was reaching out to this guy a lot. And um what he's doing in the community by reaching out to people that are in need is amazing you know a lot of people don't highlight things like this to me this is very important you know um i know you was fighting for your life and i'm glad you're here today mm -hmm. you know it's my first time meeting you and um i know for a fact you know i don't even know how the hell i would react um if i was facing a life sentence i'm being honest with you i, I can't put myself in that predicament because i hate when people say if this was me I, you don't know you don't know you know, a lot of people would have gave up after a first um, a mistrial. People would have gave up after being found, you know, guilty or it was leaning towards being uh, found guilty um, with the 11 to 1 ratio. You know, some people would have gave up after the third trial. You feel me? That's real. You got a strong guy right here, man. Just like my man Alan Iverson said, only the strong survive. You feel mm -hmm. me? And um, I just want to know, do you have a final message that you would like to, you know, give the audience? Yeah, I'm just... I'm, trying, I'm here to help y'all. I'm here to help you guys. I spend up, I spend as much time as I can responding to you, helping you, giving you little advice, directing you to people you need to go, need to speak to, to help you in your legal troubles, because I feel obligated to. I feel that I learned something and it's selfish. It's counterproductive if I don't give back. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking to this man right now. That's why I'm pushing. That's what I've been pushing since I came home. At the litigator, D-A underscore L-I-T-I-G-A-T-O-R. Watch out for his program too. Watch out, and it's a book on the way. I got, a, I got four more chapters to go. So this man working right, man. You feel me? Like, ah, I want to ask you one question before um, we wrap this up. Wallow 267, you familiar with that guy? I've heard of him. I don't. You don't know too much? No. I don't. All right, but he, he, he came home, hit the ground running, motivated the streets. Mm -hmm. um, and he's an inspirational, motivational speaker for a lot of people. And um, he has a story just like you. And it seems as though a lot of people that's come home from jail or being incarcerated is coming home hitting the ground running, man. And um, I think you should look into that person. Uh, I think it'd be a good thing for y'all to look at that. You know, and I appreciate you sharing your story on um, my show. Mm -hmm. And um, I really wish you the best um, in the near future and everything. Seriously, no problem.